Okay. Um, nice. Cheers, man. Cheers. Far better drink than mine. I'm oh, gonna... I see you went for a grown-up drink. <laughs> <laughs> My, mine's just apple juice. It says it's from Concentrate. What is that? Is that one of those claw? White claw. It's the claw, white claw. That's the same drink that was on top of that golden retriever's head in that video on Instagram that we. That's why I said I needed it. Yeah. yeah. This is good stuff. I'd like to plug Whistle Pig at this moment. Whistle Pig, the best whiskey there is. This is the six year. Hi, everyone. This is Siwoo Kim from Vivo Music Festival. And I'm here today with Brandon Reidenauer. Uh, he's a jack of all trades, a great friend, amazing trumpeter. Um, and gosh, like, I mean, you're. You're not only just a, an amazing soloist, but also, um, you know, founder of Founders uh, and trumpeter of the Canadian Brass. Um, now even getting into video editing. <laughs> That's right. Don't tell anyone. Oh, right. Geez. Brandon, sorry. I talked already too much. How are you doing? Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. Now that I'm unemployed, I, I've employed myself as a video editor. Um, but, uh, yeah, I'm not accepting any other inquiries at this time, uh, but, but yes, hey, it's true. Almost everything you said was true. Well, um, about founders, could you tell us a little bit about that? Yes. Founders. Uh, I am a founder of founders as you alluded to earlier and founders was founded in 2014, uh, as sort of, um, a actually it was we like to say that we met online, uh, which is true. I, I didn't know some of the people in Founders. Um, we shared a, uh, an, a, a SoundCloud account. And on this account, we would submit every two weeks a new song. Uh, and if you were, as part of this club, uh, if you missed uh, submitting a song, then you got a strike, three strikes, and you were out of the songwriting group. So I got to know some of my colleagues writing, well now colleagues writing through this experiment. And we got together one day to play each other's songs. And then we eventually recorded each other's songs. We made our first album and then named ourselves Founders. Um, and that's the group. Um, and you know some of these people in the group as well. Right. I, I actually never knew their origin. Um... So, I mean, I, you guys did that all through online platforms, like the whole initial connecting. Like that's, that's cool. We did at the beginning. It was a much bigger group. Um, yeah. Nate Schramm, our violist at the time, uh, started this along with Hamilton Berry and myself and Ben Russell on violin. And uh, yeah, it, it ended up growing. I think it's still going on now. I, I hit three strikes and I couldn't keep up after so many years. And uh, but um, yeah, it's still going, and I don't know how many people are, are still in the group, but that's how we all kind of found each other and found this band. And the kind of music that you play, it's like really versatile. I mean, I, I love um, the arrangements where you incorporate classical and just kind of like there's no real genre to it. Um, it's just really unique to your guys' sound world. Um, it's a, Yeah, it's a little bit genreless. Uh, for those who haven't heard Founders, it's a group of violin, cello, bass, clarinet, and myself on trumpet and piano. Our violinist also sings, our cellist sings, and we write our own arrangements and own originals, and we play everything from Bach to Radiohead to, right now, Messian. We've, we're actually mixing right now a new album called Songs for the End of Time based on Messian's quartet for the end of time. Uh, so that's what we're doing right now it's a good like isolation project mm -hmm. because you know when you're mixing things and editing things you generally are doing that alone sadly but we're here we're here brandon yeah, uh, yeah. We're all <laughs> so hello well you know i i really um am a fan of you as a musician because like you know i think in our industry there's often this idea of classical musician or a jazz musician or an orchestral musician or a chamber musician. And I find that you've sort of um, uh, just like uh, sculpted your own individual career with um, the idea of just like creativity and music at the same time. Um, 
and that's super cool. Thank you. Um, yeah, for me, that was always sort of uh, inevitable because when I was younger, I found myself enjoying the, the thing that I enjoyed most about music was getting to create it and seeing how music worked, seeing how certain intervals worked against each other and how chord progressions when stacked in different ways can make you feel all sorts, sorts of different ways. Um, so yeah, so for me, uh, music has always been, I've always, I guess, thought of myself more as a composer and then instrumentalist. Mm-hmm. Um, it can be really tough to just make a, a living as a composer. And when you go up through the, the more, I guess, classical training you're taught of what a classical composer is supposed to be and it always confused me then Um, but I think it only confused me because um, when you're in school you're kind of told kind of how things are or how the industry works Um, but it just took a little while and maybe others can relate that you kind of have to you know make your the, the best thing that you can do for yourself is to be original and make your own path and you know when people do say that this is sort of how how things are in this particular industry, um, you have a choice to either kind of go along with it and, or or do your own thing. And uh, for me, it was uh, it was kind of always hard to kind of just go along with with some kind of norm. So uh, yeah, I ended up kind of just creating these these things as a result and I'm still trying to figure out what it all means but you're being incredibly well with it and so successful and also um, I've gone into Canadian press at such a young age and and so uh, badass badass Um, and uh, I think I can relate in that like I you know I grew up just loving music and performing and communicating um, but I didn't really understand the or resonate with maybe like sort of the conventional paths that people that, that one should go to uh, go on as a violinist. Um, and Devo being one of those things that when I was, you know, still like just, I was just barely, you know, barely out of school when I started it. Um, and, you know, one of our informal concerts here in Beethoven, I know it's um, sort of done in many different places in different iterations, but it was important for me to have some sort of like maybe that concert like that, that I could really, um, I knew like the Columbus community would really enjoy, you know. Um, the Hot Chicken Takeover in North Market was sort of an iconic uh, space. So we may play, um, we may be playing um, work by um, Gerard Grise in there, or a work by uh, Mozart or Beatles. Um, but you know, there's no pretentiousness behind it, um, and the artist gets. I just told tell them like, well, here, what's the concert dress? I'm like, just dress whatever you want, and we play. Um, but uh, of course, at the very end, like again, like. What surrounds it, how you frame it is, it is up to you, whether it's a career or a concert experience, but like at the core of it has to be the utmost integrity and music making. Um, and I thought that was such a cool matchup to have you there and sort of, you, you were really the star of uh, 2018 Spear and Beethoven um, concert uh, event. Hey, when there's beer and there's Beethoven, I'm there. I'm happy to <laughs> Although there was no designated Beethoven. as that. Uh, so and I just really I have totally the wrong drink. I mean, whiskey and Beethoven doesn't have the same kind of brawn. That, uh, yeah, oops, white my bad. Claw. White Claw and Beethoven. Yeah, <laughs> no one's gonna go to that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah. Well, you said a trigger word uh, in a good way, and that is pretentious and. Um, I think that's the thing that right now I hope that classical music uh, thinks about because you know you hear it hear it everywhere. Classical music is dying. The music industry is struggling. Like we're never going to be able to recover from this. Part of that is because you know, sorry, classical music, but um, too many presenters and musicians do put up this pretentious front that makes classical music not so accessible to the layman. Um, or the or somebody who just doesn't know that much about music but still wants to enjoy it and if you come off and present a show and that's in any way pretentious it's going to really isolate you or it's going to keep you from growing your audience so something like beer and beethoven is very much the opposite of being pretentious you're bringing people together you're talking about the music it's casual 
And uh, if classical music can bring in a community like that, like you've done there with this program at Vivo, I think that those sorts of things are going to be what really helps keep classical music uh, interesting to people who wouldn't otherwise uh, view it or listen to it. Thanks so much for that. Um, you know, it's funny actually, just uh, you're in Beethoven. I remember during that specific concert where you were playing, um, you we're up there kind of talking to the audience and you were saying, well, where's the Beethoven? Because we didn't program any Beethoven. No one had any Beethoven. Beethoven. Good thing we had Bach. So we, right. we called that program, program Beer and Bach. Yeah, Beethoven will be Bach next year. Yeah, well, you know, it's funny, you know, it's the year 2020 and there's been this whole like build up towards Beethoven's political birthday. Um, and thus, when Jack and I were talking about programming for this season, at Beer and Beethoven, we absolutely need to have Beethoven. And then, <laughs> you know, <laughs> sorry, Beethoven. Sorry, uh, Beethoven. <laughs> Oops. Man, he's had a tough life and a tough afterlife, too. I know. Because of you, because you're not programming him on his own series. Denied. Uh, it's okay. Vivo's still young. You'll, you'll figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> and I remember the other snafu that we had that year um, was that there was some miscommunication with the beer vendor. Um, I don't know if you were aware of this, but I, like, was... Like I was freaking out because um, people, you know, we marketed it and people were all there. There were uh, maybe like a hundred people there. Or something. I don't know. Um, but <laughs> yeah, they, they were like, sorry, we're closing. There's no beer. Um, no beer. Yeah. It would have been just Beethoven, but there was no Beethoven either. It was just, just Beethoven. Beethoven. Well, then people <laughs> definitely won't come. <laughs> if it's just yeah. Beethoven. <laughs> and no Beethoven, Beethoven either. <laughs> and, and no Beethoven. So nobody shows up. That's some major false advertising. No, and you know, like that was about like half an hour before the event began. Like, <laughs> remain open. They were saying, "Sorry, we're leaving." I was like, "What are you talking about?" So luckily, we we decided like just quickly that we we're going to buy it. And they said we they don't have any coolers. So I rent. There was a market. You know, the, this market was closed. It was seven p.m. or so, and like it's, it's after hours that hot chicken take over the chicken joint to try to keep the space open for us. Um, uh, and it would have been, uh, anyway, um, so I- They definitely bought, weren't selling any Beethoven. <laughs> no. <laughs> so uh, we bought the beer and I remember running to like, like the fish market joint and like, I just like was scooping up ice there. It's like, just like tr trying to think of all these different ways to like preserve a good experience for the audience. And then I ran up and then, you know, like concert was about to start, like people were getting restless, you could feel it. Um, and I remember I just like, was I like kind of sweating and I ran over to like you, Gabby and Nate, I believe. And I, I was like, okay, uh, can we start? And can you guys like help me out here? Like, like just like go up there and start talking and like just get, you know, get the crowd going. And you and Gabby, especially just like went up there and like, all right, we got this spot, I can stay uh, and uh, just took charge. And it like made me so much happier, I remember. <laughs> Like, and that on. reminds me of a of a joke that I think was said that night. Uh, it has to do with hot chicken and Beethoven. Yeah. And uh, do you remember this joke, Siwu? Why did Beethoven get rid of all of his chickens? Why is that? Because all they said all day was bok, 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 bok. Please don't use that. Please <laughs> don't use that. I'm counting on you. I'm, that just left me like brain dead. I can't come up with a rebuttal to that. Really? <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> but yeah, the Agnes Day was a fantastic arrangement. Like, um, what sort of uh, got you to arrange that? I know you said like, I remember you saying something like Bach if he had been born in New Orleans. Right. I think Bach is one of the best composers that you can jazz up because harmonically it's so interesting and still so advanced. He goes everywhere in his music and jazz musicians love that. Like when, when something is harmonically complex like that and the lines are like so swingable. Uh, I think that says a lot about just good music in general. Like great music can kind of carry itself through any medium and any style. So uh, it says a lot about Bach. And this Agnus Dei from his B minor mass, I was just messing around with it, to be honest, um, with a couple of friends. Uh, I'm 
trying to remember. I know that uh, Chris Coletti was one who I used to play with uh, the other trumpet player in Canadian Brass and someone else. We were just messing around one day and like kind of like ended up on this jam of Agnus Day. And uh, I remembered it. I like remembered that day for years and I didn't like do anything about it. I didn't write anything down. And then and one day I was like, well, I've, th I've thought about that day so many times, like I might as well just write this down now. Uh, so I did, I made just like a loose three-part arrangement. Uh, and when you look at the original score of Bach, it's three parts, it's pretty simple. Um, but it's, uh, it's, it's beautiful music and, you know, I didn't really, the cool thing about arranging Bach is you don't really have to do that much. You just kind of change up the style and go. You arranged so fantastically for strings. I, did, you, did you ever play strings? I know you play some piano, like you just know how to write well for the uh, string instrument, I think. I really don't. You're just very nice. Uh, it's very idiomatic for an instrument, and I don't know. I must have gotten lucky. I think the key is to not write anything too hard, and then like a string player or any instrumentalist will say, oh, you write so well for us, because they can play it, because it's like not hard. That's the key. That's how you arrange. Um, don't make it too hard. Uh, Your but, first position, like, stay with yeah. staff. <laughs> yeah. You could have played everything on the G string, probably. Um, but you didn't because you're advanced. Well, I mean, you, so, you uh, fusing all four strings. That was right here. You gave that extended technique where you go. Oh, a little choppity do. Yeah. That's that's really fun. <laughs> yeah. You had summoned that Mark O'Connor. That's right. Uh, and you and... don't. I didn't learn that at Juilliard. Oh no, they don't teach that at the Juilliard. You have to go way uptown for that. Way up. You have to go upstate for that. Uh, <laughs> um, and, uh, wait, yeah, uh, I think that's the key. I just, I, again, it's great music. It's the Beatles. It's so melodic. The lines, I, I tend to stick with general lines that could sort of work for, for anything. Um, but yeah, yeah, thank you. I appreciate the, the, the compliment, but my, uh, my idea was I didn't want to do anything too, I guess, too crazy. Yeah, I mean, I, and you chose four songs. Um, remind me which ones you did again. Uh, it was yesterday. We did. Oh, I was just thinking about this uh, for the last few days. Uh, we did Eleanor yesterday. Uh, sorry, Eleanor Rigby yesterday, Blackbird, and a little help from my friends. Was, was there, uh, I mean, have you arranged many more, actually? I, I, I've played those several times with Siwoo. But... Why, yes, in fact, I have Siwoo. Thank you. Uh, plug time. Uh, Come Together is the name of the disc. Come Together is a collection of, of arrangements that I did of all Beatles songs. 50th anniversary of the song by John Lennon, Come Together. So there are 18 tracks on the CD and it features uh, trumpet, of course, uh, but not trumpet on, on everything. It features strings on about half of the album, actually. Uh, so I really got to sink my teeth into writing for strings uh, on this album in particular. Uh, there are multiple vocalists on this album, multiple different styles. There's a little bit of ragtime and jazzed up Beatles. There's some Latin South American sounding Beatles. Uh, and uh, well, I'll leave it at that. Uh, you can get the, the album directly on my website now and all of the proceeds go to various organizations that help things like environmentalism and sustainability and equality and racial social justice things like that i don't i don't take any money or profits from this album that's what it's all about for this particular project that's uh, that's perfect i mean i also like how poignant like come together like that's definitely what we are faced with having to do like I'm more and more um time you know um, and uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, those of you watching, uh, this is Brandon Reidenauer. As you can see, he's a consummate uh, professional and musician, um, creative mind, and just uh, well aware of where music fits in, in society. And uh, enjoy the Beatles tunes from Bevo 2018, Beer and Beethoven. Um, and if you want to hear more, uh, like you said, go uh, visit brandonreidenauer.com for the Come Together album, which actually I had the honor of playing for his uh, CD release party. And I could That's say- That's true. That's true. All the styles and musicians he's talking about, they were fantastic. And I can't wait to hear more live music because all those memories are flooding my head right now. Anyway. In Beethoven. 
Here, Mandarin and Beatles and Brandon. The four of you.